Warm welcome to all. These are the Collects uh, Reading and Reflection for the second Sunday before Lent, Creation Sunday. We join together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth, and have made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works, and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, supreme over all things, now and for evermore. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first from the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. And when he had not yet made the earth and the fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he had established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made the firm the skies above when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, then I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have come to have the first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being with him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of man, or of the will of flesh, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Well, the second Sunday before Lent, also known as Creation Sunday, that time when we give thanks to the gift of God in creation. Creation really is a beautiful and a wonderful thing, intelligently created and made by God. And we are given responsibilities as human beings. 
for looking after it. And it might seem that we've not done very well at that. If we look at the environmental destruction that has gone on in our world, if we look at the current pandemic we are in, these are all as a result of our abuse of creation. So it's a good thing that we set this Sunday aside to reflect on how we live out our lives and our Christian discipleship in the world. The book of Proverbs teaches us about creation there in the reading today. The fact that the Lord was there at the beginning of the work. In the daily office that I use, and I'm using the uh, Book of Common Prayer, the 1922 lectionary this year, in the last week we've been looking at uh, Genesis, the beginning of the creation narrative and how that works out. We see there God creating and making, giving us the gift of the world. And we see in the story of the fall of humanity how sometimes we can abuse that gift by trying to make ourselves greater than God. Well, we have a wonderful opportunity in this pandemic and every challenge can become an opportunity if we frame our thoughts correctly. But we have a wonderful opportunity in this pandemic to think about how we use the Earth's resources. Do we just use them and abuse them for what we might fancy or what we think we need? Or do we use them responsibly and acknowledge that they are God-given things? That stewardship, that responsibility that we are given, of course, begins with ourselves. How do we steward ourselves? our own thoughts, our own desires, our own needs. And when we think and we reflect on that, then we can move on to think about how we steward our world. Do we use things responsibly? Do we not waste? Do we recycle the goods that we no longer need? Or do we just throw them away? Those are important questions. We need to be good stewards of our resources. We need to think about how we use creation, whether we farm responsibly, how we ethically treat God's creatures. All of these things are important and they are at the heart of what it is to be a child of God. We are given enormous privilege in our world, but we are also given enormous responsibility. And we've learned through this global pandemic of what happens when people abuse that responsibility. Do we really need all these international travels and flights? Do we really need to use the enormous amount of energy that it takes in order to do that? Or could we all live a little more locally and sustainably? The vision that we're given in the reading of Paul to the Colossians today is that image of Christ there, all things created through Christ and for Christ. And we are created for Christ as well, as his children. We are called through the gift of the Holy Spirit to manifest the love of Christ in our world today. A very important love, a tremendous love that puts ourselves last and puts other people first. This week, sadly, Captain Sir Tom Moore died. But he had done some wonderful work, tremendous work in the last year, to raise funds for the National Health Service. But one gift that he had, and that gift that he shared, was a gift of optimism and cheeriness, acknowledging that things weren't very good, but also acknowledging, too, that they would get better. And we too have to have that same spirit of optimism to believe that life will improve and things will get better. The end of the reading of Colossians talks about Christ's reconciling work, that reconciling a work of God on the cross. And that ministry of reconciliation that Christ undertook has been entrusted to us now to build a world where there is justice, fairness and peace. Justice, fairness and peace are not easy things, 
because they involve sacrifice for us all. We don't believe in justice, fairness and peace because we want to have our own way over everything. We believe in justice, fairness and peace because we want all people to be able to live well. And then to our gospel reading, we could be coming back to uh, Midnight Mass again, the reading of that first chapter of St John's Gospel, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the word. But it's important for us to remember on this Creation Sunday that the word was before all things, that he was there at the beginning, and that he comes to breathe life into our world, light in the darkness. The darkness does not triumph. It's very important we all hold on to that, that light, that life, that peace that Jesus came to bring into our world. It's not just something that has happened, something that continues to happen, it's something that needs to be ongoing. So we learned some very valuable lessons on this Creation Sunday. First of all, that God is an intelligent creator, that he makes our world. He makes our world for us to flourish in, but he makes our world as well for us to be responsible for. We are called to be good stewards of that resource. We're called to be good stewards of ourselves as well in our personal management. We are called to be bearers of God's love. Nothing in the divine economy of God is ever wasted. Every experience we have, the bad ones as well as the good, are there to teach us something. But when we have learned those lessons, we need to act on them. If there is one thing we can learn from the COVID-19 pandemic, is that there is more to life than just consumerism and materialism. That we need a greater depth of being. That we need to look out for our fellow human beings and ensure that everyone has enough. I'm always heartened by the contributions that you all make to the food bank. The Bishop's Lent appeal this year encourages us to keep those going. Just make an extra special effort when Lent begins to increase our contributions slightly, that we may show those who are vulnerable and in need that they are truly loved and cared for. So on this Creation Sunday, let's pledge each and every one of us to take care of our creation that God has so lovingly made, to appreciate its beauty, its wonder and its joy, that we may pass it on for generations to come. To God be the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the light delights of eternity. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen.